God's plan for man is to multiply, bear fruit and replenish the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. This is why he created the institution of marriage. The sole purpose of marriage is for companionship and that was why he created Eve so that she could be a companion to Adam in the Garden of Eden. God's will and purpose for a relationship that involves his children are for them to live a fulfilled, purpose-driven life. He wants a relationship that has the peace and joy of God. He wants a relationship that glorifies God, where the wife loves and respects the husband and where the husband loves and respects his wife in return. God wants a relationship where the parent brings up godly children and then the cycle goes on from generation to generation. Where you are now in that relationship that has been ordained or approved by God, it means you have adhered to his instructions concerning the union and that you and your spouse are now in a relationship filled with the joy and peace of God. But it's important to know that even the relationship God has blessed can be tampered with by the devil. The devil will always try to bring up issues in marriage just to make sure he destroys the marriage. Yes, you could argue that since God sanctioned the union, why then are you experiencing crises in your relationship? The moment you begin to slack and lose focus in your marital life, then you could be giving place to the devil to sow crises to that relationship. It is important that you don't allow the devil to take hold of your relationship but that you should be vigilant and watchful always. The moment you begin to notice that things are not moving fine in that relationship, then there is a need to check yourself or your spouse. It could be as a result of things you're doing wrongly. It's not as if you or your spouse deliberately plan to destroy your marriage. Most of the things that eventually destroy your relationship little and are not considered important that destroy your relationship would begin to escalate until it can no longer be controlled. By this, so many Christian relationships, marriages and homes have been destroyed. Marriage requires hard work and effort. The moment the effort required to nip the bud of these evil things is not put in place, then it can sour the relationship. One of the most important things you as a believer should not do is to slowly draw away from God. The foundation of every relationship or marriage should be based on God. This is why the relationship came into existence in the first place. However, the moment you or your spouse, or it could even be the both of you begin to draw back from God, then there would be a great consequence for it. This is because a relationship that lacks God is surely heading for a quick end and destruction. This is why you should never backslide from his presence. This is why you have a companion in the first place that can make you realize that you're drawing back from the service of God or it could be you that should help your spouse see reasons to come back to God. Don't let it be too late to revive yourselves in the faith. Always make sure your candles are burning brighter for God, always. Don't let it get dim. Don't let your spiritual fire get cold. The moment God leaves that home as a result of your sin and trespasses, then you're inviting the devil to come and take over. Don't wait until the devil gets hold of your marriage or relationship. Make sure you abstain from every form of presence or appearance of the evil. Another thing you need to take note of and avoid doing so as to not drift your relationship is having communication issues. The moment a relationship lacks communication, then it is doomed to fall apart. Communication is key between you and your spouse. Effective communication is not just about speaking or saying what you think or feel about a particular situation or thing to your partner. Communication involves carefully choosing the right words and stating how you feel without hurting your spouse's feelings or ego. Communication will bring about speaking to each other in love and solving issues together that may be detrimental to the well-being of that relationship. Poor communication skills have rendered so many relationships and marriages useless and devoid of love. The most effective way of communication is by praying together as a couple to God. He is always there to grant your heart's desire. 
Having an unforgiving spirit is detrimental to any relationship. No human relationship is perfect. Everyone has or two flaws they are trying to work and improve on. Everyone is striving for that perfection in God. In a relationship, both you and your partner are bound to hold grudges against one another. There are going to be misunderstandings and petty arguments over issues in the relationship. The moment one or either of you or your spouse begins to hold these grudges and take them at heart, there will be a growing bitterness towards your partner which would then lead to hatred. Be careful of having the unforgiving spirit. Learn to forgive and let go. Of course, it is possible to get angry but don't let the sun come down on your wrath. Let go of every hurt, anger and bitterness that you feel towards your partner and stay focused on God. When your partner does things to offend you, make them realize it and correct them in love. Having pride and ego is another red flag to be avoided in a relationship. The design of marriage is that the wife should submit to her husband while the husband should love his wife. The moment you begin to feel egoistic and prideful towards your partner, it will breed resentment from your spouse towards you and vice versa. The Bible in James chapter 4 verse 10 asks us to humble ourselves before the Lord and He will exalt us. It is important not to allow ego to rob you of God's blessing in that relationship. Another important thing that you should never do in marriage is the sin of sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is one of the root causes of divorce today in marriages all over the world. The Bible tells us not to commit adultery. Then Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 28, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her or his heart. The sin of sexual immorality may stem from lusting after another man or a woman. The reason could be that your partner or you have been deprived of sexual benefit that should be accrued to either you or your spouse. The sin of immorality is so evil that it is given as the only condition for one to divorce his or her spouse, as per Matthew chapter 19 verses 9. Don't allow the sin of immorality into your home or marriage. Another issue that can lead to sexual immorality in marriage is as a result of little or no commitment in the relationship. Commitment entails sacrifice. The moment you're not willing to let go of your desires, then it will lead to a breakdown in a relationship. This brings us to another thing that should not be done in a relationship, which is selfishness. When you begin to act selfish towards your spouse or partner, it shows that you are on your right and you're not willing to let go. You believe you are the one who has been wronged in one way or the other. This could also be what's on the mind of your partner and because both of you stand on common ground and reach a compromise, the relationship gets destroyed. In every relationship, don't allow selfishness and ego to make you lose that partner. There are moments that even when you're right, you let go of things to make peace reign in the marriage. Now, I'm not saying that you should endure toxically or things that will drain you mentally, but what I'm saying is that you should not allow little petty things that could have been overlooked to take a foothold of the joy and peace in your relationship. In an argument in a relationship, the aim is not to win or lose, but to sort out issues and address them. Another thing to consider in a relationship is time. You or your spouse should not get so involved or engrossed with other things such as work, career and the likes that drift in the time you have for yourselves. For the relationship to thrive, there is a need for both of you to devote time for each other so that you can settle each other's needs. It is when you both have time for each other that you can pray together and seek God's face concerning issues that are affecting your relationship or marriage. When you have time for each other, communication would be effective and things will work out fine. It is important to always seek God's face by studying and meditating on His word daily. 
As a couple, you must learn to pray together because a family that prays together stays together. Learn to build a family altar where you always seek God's face for every issue that concerns your relationship, marriage or home. Joy.